limits to come up with locally based options. We've already amended legislation to help employers and employees with the 90 day legislation, which will be quite magnificent. And just yesterday, we saw an increase in the minimum wage under this national government. The Honourable Annette King. Supplementary question. Honourable Annette King. Can she confirm that rather than sitting on their hands, as she claimed, Labor and Government reduced unemployment rate from 7.5 to 3.8 per cent through active labour market policies, which saw 140,000 fewer people on the unemployment benefit? And if the previous Government's policies did nothing, which programmes has she cancelled since she became the Minister? What programmes have you cancelled? <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, the, I have no responsibility the for the, what order, the Labour government order, did. Order. The Minister might call. Sorry, Mr Speaker. The Honourable Paula Bennett. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, this government is focused on accountability back to taxpayers for their money, and we are quite proudly standing up and saying that we're looking at all programmes that are being done, we're looking at best value for dollar, and we'll be delivering back to families that really need it. The Honourable Annette King. Mr Speaker, what advice did she give regarding the 50 cents an hour increase to the minimum wage and its impact on unemployment? And did her advice include a comparison between a Cabinet Minister's tax cut of $120 a week from the 1st of April and the $20 a week gross a low-income earner will receive on the minimum wage from the 1st of April? The question was fairly wide of the primary <laughs> question, but uh, I will allow the Minister to answer the Honourable Paula Bennett. Mr Speaker, this Government has an unrelenting focus on work and we will be supporting New Zealanders to stay in their jobs and keep their jobs and get back into jobs whenever possible. Question number five, Keith Locke. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Mr Speaker. The, I've, called, I've called Keith Locke. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister in charge of the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service and asks how many current members of Parliament does the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service maintain personal files on? Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, in accordance with long-standing practice, I decline to provide details on the work of the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service. This matter will undoubtedly be considered as part of the review I have asked the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security to undertake. Entry. Keith Locke. Now, thank you, Mr Speaker. Does the Prime Minister favour the Security Intelligence Service uh, re-looking at existing personal files and closing all of those uh, that don't, as the legislation requires, involve sabotage, subversion, espionage or terrorism, and for a start, close my SIS file, which has been running without any ethical or legal basis for over 50 years? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, NZSIS methods and information collection priorities have altered over the years as the nature and perceptions of threats to security have changed. The practices of the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service that are reflected in some of the personal files are of a different era. They were meticulous in detail and often included material that would not be collected today. It's my understanding that the member's file was, cl uh, was closed in 2006 and there is not a new file. Supplementary, Jeanette Fitzsimons. Is the Prime Minister concerned that the information on my colleague's SIS file and in others recently released show that over the years many of the targets of SIS surveillance have been legitimate critics of government policy and if so, what will he do to ensure, what will he as the responsible minister do to ensure that the service properly targets its activities to those genuinely presenting a risk to New Zealand's security? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it is very clear and important that there should be a delineation between political activism and genuine security risks. Uh, I'm concerned enough to have asked 
the Inspector General of Intelligence and Security to undertake an investigation. He's assured me that he should be able to report back within two to three weeks. I'm happy to table the letter this afternoon if the member wants uh, to uh, Paul Naser, uh, but for the member's um, benefit, I can tell her that included in the terms of reference are the following. The adequacy and suitability of the services policies relating to the creation, maintenance and closure of files on New Zealand persons in light of the services functions under the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service Act 1969 and the adequacy and suitability of the services compliance with such policies in light of the matters raised in the public domain. Dr Kennedy Supplementary. Mr. Dr Kennedy Graham. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, will the Prime Minister confirm that the Intelligence and Security Committee Act will be amended to ensure that the relevant committee, which has oversight of the SIS, will be transformed into a proper select committee that includes members of all political parties represented in the 49th Parliament, thereby ensuring broader accountability to the public? Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, no, I can't confirm that the uh, select committee will be wa uh, widened to include all parties. Um, but I would point out to the member that there are currently five independent bodies who are officers of parliament that are separate from the executive who have some responsibility in overseeing the activities of the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service. And they include the Privacy Commission, the Chief Ombudsman, the Controller and Auditor General, the Commissioner of Security Warrants and the Inspector General of Security Intelligence Services. Keith Locke. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Will those New Zealanders uh, who have recently received their files from the Security Intelligence Service, files showing gross abuse of their privacy, be given an opportunity to make submissions to Justice Naser? particularly in light of the broad uh, range of his uh, mandate, as uh, the Minister has just expressed? And would he recommend that uh, perhaps the inquiry take longer than the two to three weeks he uh, mentioned in his previous answer? Speaker. The Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, I'm not proposing that um, Paul Naser undertakes uh, a broader consultation process, but uh, obviously, the member feels strongly about his own personal file and the collection of that file, and there would be nothing stopping the member writing to uh, uh, Justice Naser, and I'm sure he would take that into consideration in, in his findings. Well, point of order, Dr Kennedy Graham. Mr Speaker, I seek leave of the House to table the current list of the Intelligence and Security Committee. Leave has been sought to table that document. Is there any objection? There is no objection. The member will table it before the end of today's session. Thank you, Mr Speaker. May I just add that... Uh, well, the order. The yes, member sir. cannot add unless he's raising another point of order. If he wishes to raise another point of order to table another document, that is fine. The member may do that. Point of order, uh, point um, of order Keith Locke. I uh, hate to cut across my colleague, but there's a slight problem with this uh, document and it seems to include the Honourable Winston Peters on the list and uh, I was of the understanding he wasn't represented in this parliament. Order. Order. The member knows that's not a point of order. <laughs> the quest week point of order the Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, I seek leave to table the letter I wrote uh, yesterday to the Honourable Paul Naser uh, in, in relation to the terms of reference uh, that I've asked him to look at for or take into consideration in terms of his investigation of the New Zealand Security Intelligence Service. Leave is sought to table that letter. Is there any objection? 